Hi, this is the Sankofa Pan African series. Please support us by taking a few seconds to click on the subscription button. I, Black Pharaoh, uh, is Emmanuel, uh, Emmanuel Kulu's novel, is a fast-paced Egyptian story. It is the untold story of destiny, triumph, and epic battles based on the historical rise of the Queen Pharaoh, Hatshepsut, and the expansionist warrior Pharaoh. Uh -huh. Can you set the scene a bit so that the reader knows, you know, what led to, to, to this war in uh -huh. the nutshell? Well, what led to these wars, we're talking about the Nubians for the Kushites, uh, the Nubians versus the Egyptians, who were neighbors. Um, and for years. I mean, in this novel, in your novel. In this novel, in particular, yeah. between the Nubians and the Kushites. Okay. Because I, um, I think that um, you started out the novel with um, Hashepsut's husband mm -hmm. having an affair with mm -hmm. a, Nubian, a Nubian slave. Exactly. So yes. I, so I. I can you, I, I, I just wonder if you can bring yes. us from that to... Okay, so without giving the entire book away. Without giving the book away. <laughs> <laughs> um, so basically what happened was uh, Tutmosis II, um, it's known that he had two wives. Hafshetsu was his uh, royal queen and uh, or royal wife is what they called in Kemet in those days. And he also had a secondary wife named uh, Iset, who was of Nubia, half Nubian and Egyptian. His true love. <laughs> yes, yes, his true love. So Hatshepsut already kind of had a disdain for the Nubians due to his secondary wife. But just so happened there were uh, confusion on the borders of between the Egyptians and the Nubians. Um, Breaking uh, the breaking of treaties, past treaties in the future, where in the past where the Nubians had made with the Egyptians that they violated. So, Kemet being the dominant force that it was at that time, it caused for Hatshepsut to act. Now, at this particular time, Tutmosis II was was away with uh, his his secondary wife and his son, Tutmosis III. So this forced. Queen Hatshepsut to make a decision to either wait for him or fight this battle and lead the supreme forces against the Nubians. Mm. Awesome. I, it is fantastic what you did with history because uh, historically they, they were neighbors, the Egyptians and the, the Nubians and of course there was more than one Nubian ki uh, kingdom. Right. Um, but at one point, especially after uh, the Egyptians um, kind of lost the, the, the forest um, region around the Nile. They mm -hmm. needed wood and other things from, yes. from, uh, from, from Nubia. And they started raiding mm -hmm. Nubia. Yes. So that eventually when the Hyksos, who were one of the first people to conquer Egypt, when they came and conquered the upper uh, upper Egypt, mm -hmm. Egypt looked to Nubia yeah. for help, and Nubia said, "Stop nope. them!" In retaliation, yeah. no, you've uh, you've not been nice to us. Yes. You know, I love the way you brought out all these, yes. Yes. and then using real human beings, mm -hmm. you know, to kind of um, bring to life, you know, things you read in hardcore history. Yes. So it's, it's awesome. And, 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 so and how much research did you do? I mean, I did three years worth of research. I mean, I was really interested in Amos originally, very interested in Amos and him restoring the native Egyptians back to, to Kemet mm. um, because of the Hyksos, as you mentioned. Mm. Um, so Hapshetsu was, when, if you notice when she's speaking throughout the book, she's restoring, she's restoring the, the glory of, of Kemet back to its original form from what almost brought it back to. Mm -hmm. um, and back to what Narmer, Narmer Menes started. So um, that was very, very important. But it took me three years to mm -hmm. research. And also, I believe the Bible is one of the best historical books 
I believe it is the best, obviously. But um, that's why that had to be incorporated as well. Um, without giving away, there are some biblical connections of people's favorite, some of people's favorite characters yeah. mentioned in the book in connection with Egypt um, and this uh, the 18th dynasty. So um, of ancient Egypt, which happened to be the greatest dynasty that Egypt ever had. I, 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 and then, because of I've always been passionate about history anyway, and uh, but I keep coming across this study. Why do we need to live in the past? Why do we, you know? So what lessons are there, you know, in these historical characters that you have brought to life in your book for us who are alive today? Mm -hmm. Well, the lessons are we can learn from our past by, by some of the downfalls of some of our great African civilizations, but we also can learn to be romantic, let us romance in our glory as well. Mm -hmm. for, for hundreds of years now, in the Americas at least, it's been force-fed us through media, through books, through television shows, through school curriculums that, that African people were core impoverished people who had no form contribution to history. And clearly we know, according to the Greeks, that the Egyptians were very instrumental in their learning and their science and their mathematics, even their worship, yeah. even their use of speech. So that is so important to return to that. Even Europeans to, who rose to power after the 14th century, around 1492, when they started to sent all these mercenaries everywhere. <laughs> when they, they connected back to ancient Greece and ancient Rome as there to strengthen them to do what they eventually did. They claimed them. Yes, yes. To be able to kind of embolden themselves yes, to yes. take on the world. Mm -hmm. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And that is the same thing for the African diaspora is to connect back with Kemet, to remember the, the monarch of such a civilization was ancient Egypt. And actually the first colonist civilization was actually ancient Egypt. It is to, the cradle of civilization exactly. of everywhere in the world. Uh -huh. Thousands of years before civilization anywhere else, it started mm -hmm. in Egypt. Yes. Egypt gave us the foundation of everything that we have today. Exactly. <laughs> so if we can realize that we're more than what's being promoted to us as an African people, yes. as the diaspora. Yes. I spent some time in Sudan and I spoke to some of the Sudanese brothers and sisters and they mentioned to me that they knew nothing about the great Kushite kingdom. And that, that just shocked, it shook me so, it shook me so much of the miseducation that is happening back home. Yeah. To, yeah. to not know how you can be in Nigeria and not be taught about Benin. Believe it or not. It happens. You know, it, it, it just, it, it hurt me so bad because from my understanding, my father, he always studied the histories. He studied, so he was a little more advanced when it came to that. And that's something that we also need to understand is a lot of our brothers and sisters who made it over to the Western hemisphere are the best of the best. <laughs> are the, <laughs> we are the best of the best uh, because to go through the process of immigration to end up here, you, you, you already said it in your mind that you're going to be someone great. So um, I was raised with those things and I was just surprised to see back home that the knowledge, uh, understanding of who we were is very similar to what's going on over here in the Western hemisphere. So when Black Panther came out, you know, everyone, you know, you're talking about Africa. Americans, you're talking about Africans were in power. So that inspired me to say, okay, I loved Wakanda. I love all of that stuff, but it was not a true story. I would like to tell a true African story that actually happened in history that shows our people who are still stables in history to this day. You just <laughs> my next question, which was going to be, you know, uh, there are historical novels, there are historical stories, you know, how is this different, you know, from other historical novels? And um, the very fact that uh, you've mentioned that it is based on real characters, you know, mm -hmm. is something that I think makes it really, really rich mm -hmm. and, um, and unique. 
And it's good to bring that adventure to it, right? To bring out the adventure. That's why I wanted to write a historical fiction to keep the, the, core, the core facts of it true, but to bring that fantasy, that, uh, the Egyptian mythology to it as well. You know, the curiosity, the mystique of ancient Kemet that, uh, you know, they're still trying to say to this day that instead of Africans building ancient Egypt, they had to be aliens. Or yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> there are people who would rather believe it was built that. Rather yeah. than see that Africans did that, they'll say, no, aliens must have. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but there's great evidence. Even uh, Ivan Van Sertma, he had a book that talks about the African presence in America. I mean, that yeah. can explain so much the pyramids that they felt were so similar to Kemet mm. in Africa and in Nubia as well are in the Americas. So there was contact. Um, I believe uh, it was Abu Bakari um, the second. Yes, Mali. The, of Mali, yes. The of Mali. Yes. yes. In Columbus, the second. Sailor, the one who, Col the voyager. Yes, <laughs> yes, the explorer. Yeah, the were. the uh, Columbus second, he wrote his second um, journal, and he mentioned that the people, the Native Americans of Hispaniola, yeah. told him yeah. that they had golden spears from African traders. Yeah, and he stole them like he stole everything else. He stole them, took them to Spain, had them assayed, and found out they were from Western Mali. Yeah, and so. Abu Bakr's um, the person. The Mansa who reigned after Abu Bakr was Mansa Musa, the yes. one who went on a pilgrimage from Mali through Cairo mm -hmm. to, to Mecca. But by that time, Egypt was already declined. It was under yes. uh, the rule of um, Persians, Arabs, mm -hmm. and all of that. Yeah. But they were so broke. But he spent so much gold mm -hmm. in Cairo that it took. Egypt, 12 years to recover from the inflation caused by the amount of gold that Mansa Musa spent there. Mm -hmm. And based on that incident alone, news of Mansa Musa spread like wildfire all over Europe. And because Europe was going through such a really bad time, there was mm -hmm. famine, there was uh, the Black Death plague, they were poor. Dead, poor. You know, there was crop failure. The monarchs, that was when the monarchs started giving explorers uh, money to go and look for Mansa Musa's gold. Mm -hmm. It got us into trouble. Yes. In fact, a map came out that same year, trying, it's called the Catalan map, trying mm -hmm. to locate Mali. Yes. You know, and that was when all of them sent their uh, mercenaries that they now yeah. call explorers to go and yes. look for Africa. And and literally a hundred years, literally a hundred, maybe 192 years after the reign of Mansa Musa is when they, so, you know, what Mansa Musa did, yes, we celebrate it, but he also awoken the I know. European <laughs> nation. He's only been a bit more prudent. Yes. <laughs> he has been generous with the gold in, in, yes. in Mecca and then Cairo and everywhere he stopped by. <laughs> yes. He, you know, the richest man probably ever to live. I mean, they say mm. over 500 billion in gold. That man, so, and that's just what they estimate. Yeah. So, um, but it is also. <laughs> there, are, there are economists who say compared to even the richest people alive today, Mansa Musa was still richer. Exactly. When you compared, you know, factored in the inflation and all the dynamics of economics, he mm -hmm. is still the richest man who ever lived. Exactly. And, and it's very oh, notable when it comes to African history, mm -hmm. to a lot of the stigma for African women is that African women are strong women. Well, it's it's very it's That's very. I mean, this is one of them. By the way, we actually it's. I mean, it's funny how minds work. We just recorded. We we had just recorded an episode of on her life as part of our African legends. We okay. haven't heard it yet. You know when you know I you send the novel and I'm like, wow. <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. Gonna do, I'm going to. I'd love to do this episode on this fictional uh, character and then. Mm -hmm kind of 
do it side by side with the he real historical figure so that people will know that you exactly. did a lot of research, you know, before putting yeah. her together. This Absolutely. It, that, that's, that's amazing. <laughs> but what they always say is that African women are so strong, right? Well, if you look back in our history, African women were the first women to rule. They were the first women to be considered gods. They were the first women to be considered priests. They were the first women to be considered doctors. So these are things that, and also to be the root of the king. To Not to say that ancient Egypt or a lot of other African civilizations were um, not misogynist, so to speak, but they had a, a, a measure, high measure, of respect for the African queen. I mean, you're talking about Queen Imani Reyes who fought off the Romans, who, who saved uh, ancient uh, Nubia from Roman power, Roman imperialism. So that in itself, you're talking about women who defended their kingdoms, who fought in wars. I love Imani Reyes' story um, because she, um, she lost her husband, she lost her eye, and her eye in battle. Um, and and still managed to yeah. Yeah. keep going to yeah. to keep Nubia at that time free from colonization. Mm -hmm. So it's just so many remarkable things that we can look back that empowers us to this day. <laughs> the original Amazon woman, the original Wonder Woman, <laughs> was the black woman. I know, I know. <laughs> the Hovian women warriors, mm -hmm. you know who you know who kind of, when they felt that the men couldn't handle it, you know got out and did the work that just got on with what needed to be done. <laughs> exactly. So when you mention, when you ask that question of what it does for the diaspora, to hear that, to know that, mm. and there's an energy when, uh, when an African woman walks into the building. There's an energy that comes in with this woman, a presence. And the same thing with an African man. And it's that, that presence of royalty that we have to reclaim. Mm, thank you. So what can we expect from you um, in, in the near future? <laughs> near future is going to be the second edition of uh, I Black Pharaoh Rise to Power, which is going to be I Black Pharaoh, the Golden Age of Triumph, which will, uh, it will have three new chapters added to the book. We're also going to add illustrations because it's very important to see yourself. In, in ancient Egypt. It's very important for us to see the visual of these black Africans as the, uh, the, the origins of ancient Kemet. So to make that connection, because if they don't see it, then um, they will imagine every, anything that they can. Somehow black pharaoh will turn into white pharaoh or something like that. <laughs> so um, we're gonna release that. We're also going to do the rise of Imani Reyes which is also going to be a part of the Black Pharaoh um, edition. Yeah. We're going to do that. We're going to go down to South Africa. We're going to talk about the great Yashantawe. We're going to talk about some great, uh, and we're going to get back to Shaka. We're go we have to get back to Shaka. We have to. <laughs> <laughs> because Shaka's story, the assassination of Shaka Zulu, was not merely by his family. It was other forces that were around the, the, the assassination of Shaka. Don't so, give it all away. Don't give I won't. Away. I won't. <laughs> I won't. So that needs that story needs to be told. How you know other people around the world knew about Shaka? Mm. You know, awesome. contributing. We'll continue to look forward to um, to your works, and um, so uh, how can people get your books other than uh, on Amazon? Are there other outlets for? For your books, um, do you have a website? If people mm -hmm. want to reach out to you, how can people contact you? The best way to find me is iblackpharaoh.com. Also, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook is under Emmanuel Kulu or I am underscore Kulu. Um, but the best way is through the website. If you would like to purchase the book, we're on Indigo. We're also on Barnes and Nobles, Amazon. There's many different kinds of Amazon, Amazon UK and Amazon uh, CA. Um, and also, we're also uh, in South Africa as well. Um, so you can just look up I Black Pharaoh, Google it, Rise to Power, and all the platforms that we're on will come up. Awesome. 
Thank you very much.